Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. Your number one stop for stellar reviews of volumes, arcs or stories that us or yourselves choose. You can find us live every Wednesday on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch and the replay on all podcast networks. Take a seat, get yourselves and your opinions ready as it's time to join the herd. But first, please put your hands together for your hosts, Shane, Phil and Scott as they kick off this week's discussion. Ahoy hoy and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. I'm Shane, your host for this week and I'm joined as always by the man who has a voice for radio and a face for magazines. It's Scott. Oh, stop. Thank you very much. Hello, I everyone. Not. <laughs> God, you can be host again. Jeez. <laughs> you only get this treatment when Phil's not here. Oh, um, yes. Unfortunately, as you can see, Phil's not here this week. Um, I think he's off killing someone for the month, is he, to get his next month to yeah. live? I'm not, yeah. not sure who he's picked, but it's. I think he said someone from the chat. I'm not sure who, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. um it's my pick this week i picked kill or be killed volume one from 2016 by image comics and it was written by ed brubaker with art by sean phillips yes i picked this one and i, I think i picked a good one shh don't tell anyone <laughs> yes, <I did. laughs> um before we jump into it, i do just want to say hello to everyone who's in the chat and see who's there we've got Funky Gibbons is in. Heidi Ho. Hi, Liam. Thanks for joining. We have Highland G says, Sup, party people, which leads straight into Triple G's comment. Is this where the party's at? Yes, every Wednesday at 9 30. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely mental every week. <laughs> Blue Sonic is in. Hi, Martin. Thanks for joining. We've got Jack Talks Comics. Hi, everyone. Kevin is in as well. Hi, Kevin. Thank Love you for Kev. joining. So that's everyone for now. Um, but we're going to be talking about Kill or Be Killed. So if you've read it, don't forget to share your scores later on and share your thoughts as we go with this book. But Scott, what did you think? Uh, what's the book about? <laughs> oh, yeah, probably do a synopsis first day. Eh? <laughs> so this so volume one is about Dylan, um, a young man who's having um, a few problems in his life and he decides to end it all. Um, upon doing so, he changes his mind at the last minute, but unfortunately, he's already taken the leap and falls, but manages somehow to survive a pretty tall building fall. Was it like 10, 12 stories? He yeah. falls and lands, um, doesn't die. So he thinks, okay, it was just luck. I survived. Fair enough. Goes home, thinks nothing of it, although th thanks his lucky stars, but that's it. It was just luck. Um, later on that night, he's visited by a demon who tells him that his life is now for rent and the cost of his life is one life per month. He has to kill someone who deserves it to get one month of life. So he now has to decide who to kill, um, if it was actually real or if it was just a dream, if it's just his own mental problems shining back at him or if he should go out and kill someone who deserves it to give himself an extra month of life. And it's basically his struggle up to the point where he decides, yeah, I am going to kill bad people because I don't want to die. <laughs> Trigger warning. Yes, absolutely. And 18 plus, um, this is for mature readers only. So I wouldn't suggest, we're not going to show anything and we're not going to swear and we're not going to do all of that. But this book is an 18 plus. The show's not. We're going to be super family friendly, aren't we, Scott, as always? 100%. As always. As always. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, this was a fantastic book. I mean, uh, you all know I love a book that makes me think and this is definitely one of them. Uh, but in like low, in a few different ways, you know, um, the, the, the first thing that, grabbed me was you know how how low this guy was and uh just the you know where he was willing to to go for you know just to end it all and that sucked but then you know i i, I didn't know nothing going into this book i didn't know nothing i knew nothing double negative <laughs> yeah i knew nothing going into this book so it was a massive surprise and 
a hook even um when the demon appeared it was it totally took me by surprise i didn't think there would be any sort of supernatural element to this but it was really cool and it grabbed me uh really quick and i was like i've got to read more and but it didn't feel unnatural in this story like having the de- having the demon there it felt um it, it didn't feel out of place and I, I you know that that was that was good and i it was it you know what i'm trying to say it didn't i feel, do i understand yeah it was, it was a natural forth. supernatural yeah. inclusion <laughs> natural supernatural yeah um <laughs> but yeah and then and then how it goes throughout the whole thing then of him questioning himself did the demon actually appear was it just his own mind dealing with the fact that he's just tried to, you know, commit suicide, and you know, was it real? And it's it's that thing, isn't it? Because he's got the th- he's got thirty days essentially to kill someone to extend his life. But then when you're struggling so much with, is this real? You know, like, but then you know, the closer you get to that thirty days, the more panic you're gonna have. So if it wasn't real and he did kill someone, then he was gonna live anyway. But then, what's going to happen if he doesn't kill anyone? And that and that's the struggle this guy had, and and that's what I was enjoying reading. Um, just you know, is it is it a bit bad to say I enjoyed reading about this man's struggle with his mental health? Um, but it was no, very I think intriguing. you're supposed to. I think the I writer know. wants you to enjoy yeah. his book. Ah, it was good. <laughs> I mean, I had a good time. I mean, it was four issues, blasted through it, and it was really cool. Yeah, I do think um, for me personally. I don't think it needed like the action scenes at the beginning. I would I would have been quite happy just meeting yeah. him and having that build. I don't think you had to throw us into the middle of the story to get us interested because you're mm. interested straight away in this character. You know, he tells you how depressed he is and he's already tried to kill himself once. You know, so you're already intrigued. You didn't need that sort of just a mindless action scene that they kind of throw into issue ones. I suppose they do it to grab the reader's attention. But for me... Yeah. I don't think that was needed. I would the, quite happily wait for that to happen. The hook was the demon. Yeah. Like, I, and the, I, I knew I knew the premise. I knew that he has to kill someone every month to to live. Yeah. And I knew he tried to kill himself. But I thought of it more of a Ghost Rider-esque thing. I thought he was going to die and then make a deal with a demon to come back. Right. So I was surprised pleasantly that he didn't die. And it was very much a is it real is it not like even when he the demon breaks his arm um to prove that he's real he even tries to justify it he's like oh maybe i broke my arm in the fall and i just didn't feel it because of the adrenaline and you're like that makes perfect sense that that's exactly that could have happened you know it was the kind of psychology that went that was in this uh in the narration isn't it and then but it wasn't just with him though it was with it was with kira as well in halfway through when they're in the um the closed down, really cold fairground, isn't it? And they're, they're talking about, she's talking about her own, her own psychology. Um, but yeah, it was just, I just loved that kind of in-depth look into someone's psyche and, you know, just, uh, what do you say? Like everyone changes their memories to, to make it out as if what they did was, was good or if they were the good guy and stuff like that. And um, it was... I just I just had an absolute blast reading this. I've I've never read something this uh mature. Like even though there was quite a lot of, you know, tough um tough to handle oh, Jesus, I'm subject terrible. Matter. Yes, tough to handle subject matter. Then uh, it was just um it it was just mature, you know, it, it did it well, it handled it well and it didn't feel like we've talked about books in the past. And we were like, that was unnecessary. We didn't need this. We didn't need that. Why have they put that in? Why have they put this in? But this was, it felt justified and it felt like it was okay to be in the story and it felt it felt in place. Yeah. I think um, the great thing about this is from the time you see the demon to the mm. end of the book, mm. it is still open for interpretation. Oh, yes. Because... <laughs> Even at the end of the month, when he starts to get ill and he starts to feel really bad, that could all be his psychosis, you know, bringing out physical symptoms to try and push him into doing what he wants to do. And what he wants to do is kill people. He wants to kill bad people. And he's going to, you know, he has, 
the demon says someone that deserves it he makes sure that it, his wording is very exact it's people who deserve it and even when he saves the um the dancers from the russian mob yes or the the human traffickers he shoots one of the dancers um because she she attacks him and then he feels obviously he feels bad about it he says sorry as he runs off but then he questions if she dies will that negate his death and then he'll have to go and kill another bad person yeah, does he get like, so, minus yeah so minus is there a scale because we don't know the rules the rules are the rules all we know is one person per month one bad guy for a, one bad guy yeah for a month of life um he doesn't say like oh if, what if, you, if i kill two people in a month does that give me the next two months See, you I know like if i this. yeah if i crash a bus full of you know prisoners on the way to a prison am i good for the next year do you know what i mean like can yeah. i just rest and then like what if chilling. i yeah what if i go to a prison and like blow the entire prison up do I am I now immortal? Do I get to live for like the next thousand years? <laughs> like, what are the rules? I kind of wanted yeah. to know. Yeah, I want do you a just five live to step a normal, rule. Do you just live to a normal life expectancy? Or can, can you, you die? Like, if forever? I, well, yeah, like say I kill someone on the first of the month, so I'm good for the rest of the month. Okay, I don't have to kill yep. someone till the first of the next month, so or till the thirtieth of the next month. So, can I die? For the next month, because I've already paid you my rent for that month. So for the next thirty days, am I, I more invulnerable? <laughs> maybe I think you could die. It's just that the demon won't kill you for a month. Okay, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> this, this, this is. I think this is the fun part of this. You know, we are only four issues in, and there are there are twenty issues altogether. So there's so much more time to explore these rules and how it works, and um, it would be really interesting to see how it how it does unfold i mean i'll say straight away now i i know we usually save this to the end but i will read on you know this is this is a really cool story um it was just yeah it's just really intrigued me and it's that kind of maturity and thought provoking kind of uh kind of writing that um is really appealing to me and uh, i think it's brilliant Absolutely. Let's see what people in the chat have to say. Um, Kevin says it's a supernatural element. Um, it is, um, but it's not. It does. It's not a supernatural book, is it? It's a supernatural element of the book, but it yes. doesn't overpower the story. The story isn't supernatural in any way. He still has to kill people with guns and weapons and stuff. So he doesn't have any superpowers, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Highland Chi says, pretty sure the demon just required one kill a month. Um, the deserving bit was Dylan justifying oh. each kill to himself. Oh, okay. I thought the demon actually said one yeah, person that deserves like one, it. I thought it was a, like a bad guy or something. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jack agrees that it was a bit weird. Uh, the most issue started halfway through. Uh, sorry. Most of the first issue started halfway through. Yeah, I think... Um, like I said, that action scene at the beginning wasn't really necessary for me personally. I can understand why it was there, because it will grab you. If you pick up the first issue from a shelf, it will get you interested. But yeah. for me, I think that could have, those two or three pages could have been used to explain why he tried to kill himself the first time. Because he, yeah. he doesn't mention that. He just says, oh, I tried and I failed. So I think maybe he, we could have had just a couple pages of that to see how bad his life really was. Yeah. Because the second time he tries to kill himself, it is a little bit like, oh, he's still down from the first thing that happened to him. But this time it was just like, oh, my best friend now has a boyfriend and she doesn't spend time with me. So it was a bit, Wee. it's, yeah, it was a little bit whiny this time. So I think they could have just explained it a bit more. Yeah. Um, Highland G is saying, it's not a deal for invulnerability. It's payback yeah. for bringing him back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I understand. Oh, Chris is in from Off My Shelves. This happens to be his second favourite image book, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> he did a video about it. <laughs> it's his least favourite, I think. And he agrees with me. He says the demon does say people who deserve death yeah. one each month. It does. I've just um, found we'll it call here it now. rent. Uh, yes. Yeah, bad people, he says. The demon. Bad yeah. people. People who deserve death. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. And we also have Wednesday spoilers in. Hello. Try listening to Noir, Noir. Noir Jazz while reading any Brubaker Phillips. It really enhances Ooh. the experience. Nice link, little tip Link there. a playlist to us, mate. We'll, uh, yeah, get yeah, get on Spotify. Get a Brubaker playlist going. Yes, <laughs> do that. 
do that. Um, can I talk about some arty stuff? Absolutely. I was just yes. going to suggest we move on to the art. Oh, cool. Great. Mm. Um, uh, what arty bits? Paneling was cool. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, paneling was cool. Um, I, I took some uh, little samples from the first issue. Uh, just paneling. I don't think I've seen before in my many many little years of experience uh, reading <laughs> um but I, th- I thought i thought this was really cool um not, i mean not the bit not the fact that he's jumping off a building just the paneling here and just the way that you read it um the way that you know just the way that you follow it i thought it was really nice and uh this one as well with the demon yes yes absolutely I think um, some of the paneling as well, you know, when um, he's standing on the roof and then you have like, you have a splash page basically. And then down the side mm. is a white strip with all the yes. text. That reminded me of Deadly Class. They did that quite a bit. Yeah, they did. In Deadly yes. Class. I knew yeah. I saw it before and I'm really glad you brought it up because I couldn't remember. You saw it on here. We read it on. The yes, we read it here. Yes. <laughs> um, but yes. So the art, I mean, what can you say? It was, it was lush. It was, it was really good. Um, do you want to talk about your name? My name? Yeah. My name is 27 Boobs, because that's how many boobs there are in Volume 1 of Kill or Be Killed. <sighs> I'm not complaining. I just wanted to know the boob to page ratio. I'm not complaining. I can appreciate a boob, okay? I work with two every week. On the <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> no, I can appreciate the human form. So I just wanted to know, like, this is not a dig. This was just me doing some homework and some research on this book. I just wanted to know. There's an odd number of boobs in this book. So, Sean Phillips, you owe me a boob. <laughs> one whole boob, please. He'll one just whole send boob. You a, he'll just send you a picture in the post. Here is one boob. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah but in all seriousness the art is brilliant um there's it's it's quite moody uh most of the time but then you get you do get the the the, the very popping pages don't you when you see him in that kind of little dream sequence the colors are quite vivid there when we're looking at his dad's art very like bright yes. Like pinks and purples, Phil. Phil would have loved this, of course. Um, pinks and purples, uh, it's just very vivid, and it, it, it's it's kind of cool how it just kind of breaks it up for you. So you you are it's making you notice the dullness and darkness of everything else in the story. Um, yeah. yeah, really clever and really good. Just the just the 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 shading and the colors. I mean, just done so well. Yeah, like. Even when the, even when nothing is really happening, you know, like he's just going through his day to day life, he's just getting in the shower, he's just getting up, like nothing, nothing spectacular is happening, but the, it's done so well. Yeah. And the faces, you know how I feel about a face oh. in a comic book. Wow. And the faces are great. Kira's face is stunning. She's yeah. so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely um, gorgeous. I'm just giving it a quick flick through now, and I'm just looking at some of the faces. Ooh. And. <laughs> Oh, faces, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Faces are you looking at, Scott? Yeah, I'm looking at all 27 faces here. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but it's whenever you see Dylan kind of have like a mopey moment, his face is pretty much shaded over. It's like just a shadow over it. And, you know, while all this other stuff is happening around him. And, you know, it's, it's that little, those little details that really uh, make this stand out. Really enjoy Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Shall we show some examples? We have got loads of pages today. We have so many pages. Um, we'll save ours for last and we'll show the pages that people have sent in. How about that? Okay. Yep. Let me know who you're doing first and we'll get there. We'll start uh... with Jack. We'll just go from top to bottom and we'll start okay. with Jack's page. Great. Here's Jack's page. Nice. So uh, Jack has said, I've picked this because it's more about what he's saying uh, than what's actually being shown. I feel like it was saying that most people want to do the things he's doing, but have to make up an excuse of why they can't, because they don't have the right to make the judgment. Yeah, it's very much um, a moral compass, isn't it? It's like, you don't kill because... 
we don't kill people because we don't want to kill people. We don't kill people because we know we shouldn't. Hmm. You know, if we didn't have that moral compass in us from birth, we'd just go around killing whoever we felt like. Yeah. And if, as long as you're okay with the consequences, like these, you know, like, I mean, he's not even thought about the consequences, really. His only consequence is that he won't live. He's not thought once that he's going to go to jail for these things. No, you're right. He yeah. doesn't say, oh, I'm going to go, I've got to go to jail. I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to go to jail. He just, he's literally like, I'm going to die if I don't do it. So there, yeah. there was no, I know he was checking the news and stuff, but he wasn't mm. fearful of being put away. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Um, was he at all worried about getting killed himself, like by someone else, not from the demon? Or Not really. So, he, he didn't no. seem to have that. He was just scared of the demon. But yeah, that is a cool page. I love that his face, you can't see it. Yeah. Brilliant. He's just completely much, in Jack. shadow. Great page. Um, Highland G has picked this one. Highland G. Right. So he says uh, he really enjoys all the different facial expressions in this page. Uh, it, it's also uh, it also is a very real moment be between the characters. That's important because it doesn't happen that often in this story. Oh, d d is he talking? In as a whole, like as he read on, I'm guessing. I, I'm assuming he read the just... whole thing. Um, I don't know, but uh, let's assume for now that uh, that he means just this volume. Um, but this is like the I last. Like... Sorry, that was the last but one page. Um, so yes, yeah, I, there were a few moments between them. Like I know Kira was like, "We need to talk. We need to talk." And then I feel like their first moment was when they're in that empty fairground. Uh, they do kind of have a bit of a opening up with each other, and but yeah, I get it with this. It's a good pick. Yeah, it is. The faces again. I mean, everyone is so different as well. Like you know, some yeah. artists can only draw one male face and one female face, and just different. I mean, hair. Look, if you look, yeah. But Kira yeah. and um, I don't know her name at the top. She was the the one that attacked him. Uh, yeah. No, sorry, she was one of the one of the dancers, not the one that yeah. got shot. But completely different faces. Like, there's nothing the same at all. No, it's great. Really, really well done. Um, next up, we have Connie's page. Connie. Where is she? There she is. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Connie just said that uh, this is her favourite page because she likes the contrast between how colourful the dream world is and how kind of dull Dylan's everyday life is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Same as everyone, isn't it, really? <laughs> we all dream in more colours than we have in real life. That's true. But I yeah. Mean, this whole dream sequence was really cool. Um, yeah, just, uh, well, spoiler, I've got it as my page, the first page of this whole dream sequence, so I'll talk, oh. talk about that a bit more later on. I do like the fact that there's the colour contrast between dreams and real world. Yeah. Um, it's a great way to distinguish it. But when you're trying to trick people into thinking this is actually happening, it can go against you, can't it? Yeah. Because you're like, oh, there's colours on this, so it's not real. So you know yeah. it's not real before you get the reveal. So it's a bit of a yeah. shame. Well, no. So you do kind it, of have to... It does say at the start of that whole thing that he's dreaming. Yeah, but on the subway, like we don't know the subway is a dream, but yes. the colours tell you it's not yes, a real, right. it's not really happening. So you're kind of like, do I want the great colours to show what I'm going for? Or do I want the reader to be surprised that this isn't actually happening? Yeah. You know, uh, next up we have Kev, Kevin's page. Kevin. Oh, where is he? I've lost him. There he is. Okay. Yeah, that's a great page. Um, this is also Chris I'm off my shelves page as well. It is. So um, the same. I think this may also be Phil's page. Yes, <laughs> this is. I think it is also Phil's page. Okay, so we'll. I'll go through Kev's. You then yep. you go for Phil's, and then I'll do Chris's. Right. So um, Kev says, uh, "This is my page pick tonight um, because I really like uh, Sean Phillips' depiction of the city." It is, it is awesome. I feel like Phil would say something like, something like that as well. Um, <laughs> the colours are cool as well, and I like the contrast between the cool blue and the warm orange below. Uh, maybe this is a representation of the fires of hell. That's a very cool way Ooh. to look at it there, Kev. I thought it was more like the ground was welcoming him, like a warm hug, because oh. like, it, was, it was the end of his suffering, like it was welcoming him, like a mother's hug. But everyone will in interpret yeah. it different. <laughs> Interpretation. I mean, for me, 
It was just an orange light, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, just, just a big old orange light for me. Uh, nothing special. But, um, yeah, fantastic way to look at that. Uh, Kev, thank you very much. So what did Phil say yeah. about this? Phil says, the art was as expected from Phillips. The dark aesthetic matched the tone of the story. The colours um, outshone the finer details. He loved the colours. Um, they really set the tone and changed throughout depending on the scene, meaning like the dream stuff. But for this mm. page, um, you can see the colours in full effect with the shades of grey and green in the sky. It was cold and dreary, whereas down below the building was orange and warm. I enjoyed the contrast and it stood out for me. That's what he said. He didn't nice. mention the snow, surprisingly. Well, he loves snow. He loves snow. He loves snow. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Well, yeah, so that's, that's yes. Phil's reason for liking this. And then Chris's reason for liking this. Um, whenever he thinks of Kill or Be Killed, it's these pages with three quarters full of images and then the internal dialogue down the side uh, that always pop into his head whenever he thinks of this book. Um, they define the artistic layout uh, and this one is more or less the first and it made an impact on him. Not just because it's graphically pleasing and well drawn but because Dylan has one leg on the ledge and one out into nothing which sums the book uh, which sums the book up. He constantly jumps from firm steady ground to the unknown fall. Ooh. He's like psychology major. He's like dug way too deep into this. I know. This. <laughs> he's, he's, in, he's interpreting these pages really, really well. Thank you very much. Yeah. And hey, like, ooh, like I said, that's the page that reminds you of the, um, uh, what did I say? Uh, Deadly Class. Deadly Class. Deadly yeah. Class did that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, next up, we have Martin's page. Martin. Okay. Yeah. This is a really cool page. Uh, this is the first page when the shadow demon appears. Um, and he says, uh, I felt like this was a massive turning point of the story for me and made me change my opinion of what I was reading. This was a point where I got hooked and couldn't put it down. Martin, if you're still there, what was your opinion before this, this point? What did you think the book was going to be like? Did you think you were going to enjoy it? And uh, it's cool that this, this kind of turned it around for you. Yeah. Um, because I was, I mean, I was hooked um, as soon as you, he starts talking about how upset he is, you know, his roommate, yeah. his best friend. Like, yeah. That was really interesting for me. This demon, though, what a bully. Like, the way he just throws Dylan around <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I'm not real, am I? Snap, break your arm, I'll show you. He yeah. was a right dick. <laughs> I mean, he's got to prove it some way, isn't he? Maybe he shouldn't have yeah. broken his arm, but I don't know. No. <laughs> um. Your page next. Me? You ready? God, I, I don't yes. even have a reason for my own page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this was um, this was the first page of the the three page dream sequence that we get, and it just totally tripped me out. And again, this was uh, also a page that made me think of Deadly Class. You know, the one where they're in Las Vegas or something, and everything's super colourful and a bit trippy because they were high. Yep. And it just kind of reminded me of that. But everything, the fact that everything is kind of skewed. And he is still upright. He, his image isn't changed at all. I thought that was really cool. Um, just to show that he's, you know, he's not in his own real world and it is kind of a dream and everything is just kind of swirling and moving and wobbling around him. That's the kind of vibe I got. And yeah, it was just, just brilliant. I mean, the colours again, you know, there's a lot of like pinky oranges and dark purples and blues and stuff. And it's just, yeah, it's really vibrant, but in a dark way. Um, it's just brilliant. It is. It's, it was a cool. It was a cool visual, a cool way to show you that he's not only yeah. at this point where he needs to do something because his whole world is changing, but also he's so out of place in the world that he is a part of. Yeah, like you say, he's he's the only one that looks completely normal in all three panels. Yeah, what does that awesome. say? <laughs> Maybe we should all go out and kill bad yeah. people. <laughs> um, my page, I did have to do a little bit of editing too because it had it had quite a few boobage on it. Um, <laughs> this is the very last page. I picked this not just because it's such a cool image, but throughout the entire book, I was constantly going, "Was is it real? Is the demon real? Is yeah. he just... Is he a bit mental? Is he real? Is he a bit mental? And then, then he sees his dad's art. Mm. And this made me think a little bit more that maybe he's 
that he imagined the demon because he's up in the top corner but also his dad killed himself his dad drew this demon did his dad have the same deal with this demon and then yeah. he couldn't bring himself to do it so he killed himself or he just died well like all the he, they said he killed him something like that yeah but i was thinking did the dad have the same deal he you know like could could that have been where he got the inspiration for this demon art you know, was maybe, he killing the ladies that were coming up to his yeah. art studio? You know, m maybe the amount of people he draws are the people he has killed before doing that drawing. You know what I mean? Like if he maybe killed five people that month and he goes, okay, I'll draw them. Um, and then the demon is there to kind of remind him that it's his fault. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was uh, for something that's got like, was, was there any dialogue in that page? Was it, was it just that picture there? You know, for something that's just just a picture it's uh very very thought-provoking and it yeah. just kind of you know even though this is four issues long and this is the end of the fourth issue and you just you've just got so much to think about you know yeah and it's just I, yeah i want to read on and i almost did but then i was like i don't want to taint my discussion tonight by yeah. having any more knowledge of like yeah. even one more issue i don't want to know one more issue until I read on. Yeah. Um, Jack Talks Comics says, I really like the subway sequence. All the kills that actually happened, he just did to keep himself alive. But when he saved the old lady in the dream, he did it because it was the heroic thing to do. Yeah, that's true. But also, mm. he, he he knew at that point that he still had to kill someone. So is it really heroic? Or, you know, it's kind of still selfish, isn't it? Because it's like, oh, these yeah. two bad guys just happened to fall into my lap. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. like, you would like to think it was heroic, but at the back of his mind, he's always going to be thinking, it's for me, really, isn't it? And if yeah, I happen yeah. to save someone along the way, so be it. Like the girls. I mean, I know he wanted to save the girls from the club, but he, he only wanted to save them because he needed to kill someone. Yeah, but I think he was just trying to get that, um, just get the, you know, the good thing of a bad situation, you know, just mm. get get the plus of it you know and so that's what he was looking for you know kill kill yeah. a bad person but how many lives could i save by killing this one person and, you know and then well, so, you know, the first the first killing he did they they unveiled the ring and then you know the next one then he's potentially saved all of these dancers lives so you know he thought he was going to bring down the entire russian mob didn't he <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I did like that, that his first killing was a um, shopper at the playground, shall we call him? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I'm glad, like, it was someone, you, there was no doubt that that was a bad person. Yes. You know, there was no, there was no, oh, he's killing a junkie. Well, you don't know why that person is taking the drugs. You don't know what their life has been. Even, like, his friend was a junkie because of what his brother had done to him so yeah. you couldn't really judge that there was no black or white we knew that this was a bad person the first kill needed that um for yeah. the right for us we needed a black and white villain we, we needed for his a first bar. Kill. yes yes 100 percent. and i'm glad we got that with the first kill and it was done so clever and so fluid like just yeah. his memories just yeah. going back to oh actually and then pops on facebook mm, that was weird. hello yeah yeah. yeah, that was that scene was quite uncomfortable um, to read. Yeah, it was. Um, th th they're six years old, and he's talking about like sexual acts and what his brother. And yeah, yeah, it was very uncomfortable. But it it gave you the bad guy, and it gave us a nice death of someone who truly deserved it. And you watched him die, and it was great. It was yeah. such fun. <laughs> you know, even even though it wasn't a very comfortable scene, I thought. The writing was sensitive. It was done in a nice way to not really put a reader off. Because we've read stuff before that have really gone, oh, too much, too far. Yes. But, you know, I think this was, this was okay. You know, it's not okay, yeah. but you know what I mean? No, 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 was, no, no. The writing was okay. It was done in an innocent, childlike way. Because even the way he says it, it's like, oh, we can play this game that me and my brother yeah. play. And it, it's done in a completely like this child has no idea. None of they both don't have any idea. Yeah. They're they're both six years old, and he he only realised thinking back what had happened. Um, let's um, stop talking about that because it grosses yeah. me out. <laughs> Blue Sonic has replied to you about 
nice. your question earlier. He says, at first I thought it was going to be very action heavy, but after that scene with the demon, I felt like there was a new layer to this story and just instantly hooked me. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the first two pages can do that. They can sort of throw you off and think it's just going to be a mindless killer. Yeah. That's why I think that wasn't needed. Again, see, that there's multiple things adding to why I think the first three pages were not needed. No, I, I agree, to be honest. Um, but, you know, that, that layer was, I feel the same. It was the kind of thing that instantly gave me that um, is he, isn't he kind of storyline. And you're always, you, you, you then begin to read into everything. And I think that's what I really enjoy. Um, just going, you know, is this in his head? Is it real? You know, why hasn't there been any other sort of supernatural thing going on? But I think now because we've had the picture of the demon at the end, maybe it is. It is real. Yes, but also maybe it's not real because maybe his dad just drew it and he remembered the drawing from when Ah, he was six. See, that you could take it for a Yeah, fair enough. And this is what I like. The writing's great. The writing is great. We can agree with that. But what do you think of the story? The actual the actual idea the actual flow what did you think of that the concept was amazing i'll leave it at that um i love it i'm really looking forward to reading on uh just having four issues um it's a really it's a great amount of issues to start with i don't think it was too short uh i think it was you know goldilocks p- perfect just right you know and I'm little blonde really, girl. <laughs> I'm really eager to to carry on and get into it. And uh, yeah, stopping at issue four was a really good call. Um, yeah, I want more. I really do want more. Um, what I I love the narration. It felt it felt natural. It, it felt like someone was just talking to you. You know, it didn't feel like a writer was writing all the best words they can you know it just you know it, it honestly it did feel like someone was just telling you their story and it felt so natural yeah. and i loved that it was really good well, he makes mistakes doesn't he so as he's talking yeah. he's like yeah. oh, i've jumped ahead again let yeah. me oh, sorry fuck. let me go back i'm not oh, i've done it again i won't do it this time yeah if it, it did have me questioning like is he t- is he talking to us or is this the end of the story and he's talking to a police officer you know like is he in an interrogation room and he's telling them how he got to this point mm. So I was kind of wondering, is he talking to us? Who's he talking to? Well, at the moment, I'm trying to read it presently without thinking what's yeah. happening in the future. So, you know, it, it feels like they're talking to me, um, but it would be awesome if that happened at the end, if he was talking to a police officer or if he was opening up to someone else, that kind of thing. Um, maybe he's telling be... Kira. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Who knows? Um, that relationship as well with Kira... Um, Stuff like that happens, you know. This is this is I know. this is a real thing that happens. And again, I loved how you know realistic this this book was. Uh, I just felt bad for Mason. He just seemed like a nice guy. He <sighs> hadn't done it. like they haven't. You have to give us something. You have to make him a dick to Dylan. You know, like just something stupid. Like he takes his yogurts out the fridge, even though they've got <laughs> Dylan's name on, or he leaves the <laughs> toilet seat up. You have to make him like. Make, make him something so we don't feel that bad when she's snogging Dylan while he's on the couch waiting for a beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's but just a bit... I wasn't really keen on Mason. I don't know why. Um... Well, we didn't get enough to like or dislike him, so there was no reason for us to feel either way. But I kind of felt bad when they were kissing in the hallway and he sat on the couch. They're not even waiting till he's out. No. You know, it's it was just a bit of a douche move on both of their parts. <laughs> uh, Liam has commented, he says, I did believe the demon is in his head with the image his dad drew confirming that. But admittedly, I didn't even consider that maybe his dad could have had the same deal with the demon. See, so. And now he's like, I've ah, just no. thrown that. Yep, yeah, yeah. Ah, I did that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a head scratcher. That's, I think well, it's I'm done on purpose, isn't it? It's yeah, intentional. And um, Highland G says it's more of an inner monologue than narration. Brew Baker does that so well. Okay, so maybe so. Oh, so he's talking to himself, although it does feel like he's talking to someone. Yeah. Because, you know, like when, when you're talking to yourself in your head, you don't tend to go, oops, I've jumped ahead because you, mm. you know the story. So there's no need to <laughs> remind yourself where you're at. So it does feel like he's deliberately talking to a person. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, what else did I want to talk about? Uh, the how natural uh, just everything flew, flown. The how natural and methodical every, everything Flied. went along. <laughs> Flied. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. It was nothing. You know, we had quite a few flashbacks and quite a few like scene jumps here and there. Um, but I just, I just loved the way that it flied you know um it flowed it flowed so well it was brilliant um, yeah i love the fact that he caught things from his memory that he completely forgot like the the young boy story but mm. then when he wanted to buy a gun and someone was like oh no you need a gun that someone's like, like had for years and that it's not yeah. registered you know you need your granddad's gun and he's like oh Ding. my dad had a gun i found it one day when i was six which obviously yeah. leads him to the other leads him to the other part of his memory yeah. you know it was such a good transition from it him so... needing a weapon yeah it felt natural didn't yeah. it you know he met up with this drug dealer and he was like do you have a gun he's like geez man like what the hell like you know and yeah. that kind of reaction like, no, was... if, they, if they want to rob me they can take it they can take the van as well he's like i'm yeah. not getting shot for this stuff i can get more yeah. of that tomorrow <laughs> but you know i think sometimes we've just seen that um either the character has just kind of figured it out themselves or we've just jumped a scene and they just have the thing they're looking for. Uh, so this was a really smooth way of getting us as readers to where the main character needed to be to get the weapon, to progress, to find someone to kill. Yeah, because it found his victim as well. Or yeah. sorry, victim. No, target. target Not a victim, yeah. target. <laughs> he was a bit mean to his mum though, wasn't he? Like when she was standing in the doorway, she was being so lovely, and he was so dismissive Do you want of some her. Food? Yeah, but at this point, <laughs> at this point, how close was he to maybe? Dying? He had one day. I know he had one day, but that's your mum. You'd have no days without your mum. So be nice to Whoa. your mum. Yeah, that's the lesson of the nerd herd. <laughs> be nice no to your mum. <laughs> um, and ah, oh, what else do I have? I do have one little nitpicky bit um and please correct me if i'm wrong or anything like that um it was you know when he took kira out to the shooting range mm -hmm. um and he kind of he nailed it didn't he like he got all the shots in the chest loads of shots in the head yeah and that was really cool and he was saying he was like feeling calm and collected and he was able to do anything and a bit invincible and all this and he was loving the adrenaline um but then, like, when it comes to killing the, the Russian guy, he says something like, uh, you know, um, you don't stand too far away because I'm a bad shot, or something like that. And I was like, well, that's kind of contradictory. You know, how come you were such a good shot then, but then you're saying that you you might you might miss this particular target? I just thought that was a bit contradictory, that's all. Yeah. It could have been, like he mentioned, you know, your memories correct themselves to make you look better. So maybe he missed that target completely, but in his memory, he's Rambo. Yeah. Oh, so you think that's his memory? I. It could be, or it could just be the fact that you're shooting at a piece of paper. Your confidence is like up here. Yeah. It's a piece of paper when you have to kill an actual person. I know he's already killed one person, but this is another person who is not afraid of him. Because he's like, he's not afraid. Like, he's literally not afraid of me. And the, the guy's like, just standing there. And he's like, he's really not afraid. And he's got a gun pointed at him. So he then starts to feel the fear. So it could it could have just been that. Yeah. So no. I'm not too sure. Unless those scenes were kind of out of whack. Maybe edited around the wrong way. Maybe. Maybe. Um, Jack Talks Comics says, um, couldn't help but think this would make an awesome TV show. And that is one of my notes. I was like, um, I could see this on Netflix. Oh, yeah. I could see a Netflix series of this. This would be quite good. Done in the style, like a proper adult style. I'm not talking, I don't want a CW version of this. I want a Netflix oh, version. <laughs> yeah. You know, like kind of like Dexter, where yeah. he, it's a grown up show, lots of blood, lots of gore. I think they work really, really well. To be fair, um, maybe an unpopular opinion, but I reckon the BBC could do it quite well, considering all the kind of crime dramas they do. All they go do is chuck a little bit of CGI with a shadow demon in. And they they won't be able to afford it after 2024 with no license fee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is going to need a budget. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. 
Um, yeah. Leo says, um, to be honest, I'd probably be distant um, if the reason I'd gone to visit my mum was to search for my dad's gun to kill someone with. Yeah, but still it's your mum. No excuse. <laughs> I will accept no excuse for being mean oh, to your mum. Yeah. No excuses. <laughs> And Blue Sonic says there is talks for a Netflix Ooh, show. That would be Ooh. awesome. That would be awesome. It'd be very, very yes. good. Definitely worth the monthly subscription for this. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, I wonder how many seasons it would be, considering there's only 20 issues. How many? Well, you could, oh, they probably hope, uh, as long as they don't stretch it out and add a load of, you know, extra episode filler. If they mm. just did maybe two seasons, you know, 10 episodes a season, one episode based on each issue, mm. that sort of thing. Yeah, that's true. That'd be good. Um, yeah. What did you think about his ca character development in this? I I liked it because, like I say, he's not he's not a bad guy, but he's not really he's not a good guy because, no. he, you know, I, unfortunately, in this situation, we'd all like to think we would do the right thing. But we'd probably do the same thing as him. You know, you would find someone to kill. No one wants to die. So what would you do? But he does have rules, which is nice. And he does have, yeah. you know, he does have a moral compass. It might be a little bit skewed, but it's still pointing in the right direction. You know, he feels bad when he shoots that dancer. You know, at the beginning, I was kind of a bit, because we didn't see what built up to his first suicide attempt, we just see that what what built up to the second one it was a bit oh he's a bit whiny but i understand he's already tried to yeah. kill himself once but then he's like his best man i know it's his best friend and he's in love with her but he introduced her to his roommate and they're together now he's a grown-up at this point you don't yeah. do things like that especially not under their nose i mean that's just screaming to be caught isn't it yeah. while he's in the house while he's in the room i'm surprised they weren't like there wasn't a blanket over them and they were giving each other handies while they were all three of them were watching a movie. <laughs> they were so blatant <laughs> about it. Yeah. <laughs> but then you do feel for him when he realises at the end of the month he starts getting really sick and then goes out and gets mugged and then he says he feels better because he made the decision he's going to kill someone. Yeah. And the first person he kills is a playground nice. visitor. Yeah. Fantastic. Then you then you start to root for him again. You know, yeah. that he, he has, he, he does this which is what a character should do. There should be no flat line and there should be no steep incline. There needs to be waves for you to enjoy the journey. Yeah. Otherwise, you just you can get bored and you don't get bored with his character. That's true. And he's not he's not unstoppable. I mean, he gets his ass kicked by uh, a pole dance. <laughs> I mean, she beats <laughs> yeah. the crap out of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so he's not some Rambo guy, so which is nice. Yeah, that's that's that that's goes towards more of the appeal of the book that he is just a human being and it is not just on the app all the time. Like he mentions Joseph Campbell's A Hero's Journey, which is kind of the novel that has pretty much inspired every heroic tale that we've ever watched or read. And, you know, that was that was a really cool kind of nod. And, you know, he even goes, Was this bit in there? Mm, I don't think so, you know, and um, it was a really cool nod to that kind of thing. Uh, but in terms of character development, I really enjoyed, um, yeah, I think it was like issue three, where you see that he's starting to, to develop um, and learn about uh, psychology. When they talk about like, you know, if you look at all of these people in a certain area, most of them are on their phones. You want to look for the people that aren't on their, on their phones. And then like, you know, one out of 20 of them are, possibly doing something shady and uh you know so it was kind of cool to get that growth in terms of you know that he's really trying to make an effort into learning about who could be a bad guy and he isn't just picking and choosing you know oh crap i've got two days to go ah you'll do you know what i mean he's not doing that and he, he yeah he's sticking to his morals for now who knows if he kind of goes you know he might be under a time crunch and he might only have 20 minutes you know what i mean and who knows that someone go... spits some gum on the pavement yeah it's like yeah how dare you <laughs> um so yeah i'm that's the, that's the kind of aspect i enjoyed about his character development um yeah yeah Can't i enjoyed as well this is one of those weird things where 
he's not doing it for a girl. You know, he's doing it for himself, which makes mm. a change. You know, everyone normally does something for someone else. They are, they, they become a killer for someone else. They, they have this journey to save someone else, but he's doing it for himself, mm. which makes a massive change. Um, Chris from Off My Shelf says he thinks he, um, I think he was just being a bit sassy when he said that Scott, after he asked them to step away from the lady, he was just giving it a bit of sass. Oh, okay. So he wasn't, so he wasn't serious when he said mm. he's a bad shot. He was just trying to be a bit of a, a tough okay. guy. Well, I'll take it back. That's my interpretation going the way. <laughs> he also says, keep in mind, Scott, he says just after he didn't, uh, he says just after he didn't actually say anything, it was fantasy. And he said, oh, it was fantasy that he said anything cool. Yeah, right. he he did yeah. that a couple times. Actually, I, I don't think I said that. I might have said this. I might have said yeah, that. Because when he killed the first guy, he said, do you remember, was it Tim? Timothy? Yeah, went through like three says, different scenarios of what yeah. he might have said. Yeah. And he was finally just like, he just said Timothy's name and the recognition the recognition in his eyes, that was it. That that sealed his fate, didn't mm. it? Yeah. Um Triple G is sold. We got him. Well, I'm sold. We'll be picking up this trade. Nice. So that's what we that's what we do here. We tell that's you we whether it's do. worth picking up or not. Yeah. Yes. Um before we get into final thoughts and scores, is there anything else you want to talk about in this book? Uh not really. I just want to say something else i've written down it's literally a sentence um and this is kind of like when i finished the book it's pretty much all i could think of and I, i've just written like this was a maybe this would be like a little review this was a realistic take on the moral and mental implications of having to kill someone for yourself what yeah was I? yeah so that's pretty much that's pretty much the book summed up then because it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because he's not killing someone in self-defense. I mean, he no. kind of is, but it's not It's not yes. the definition of self-defense we know. You know, like someone is trying to kill you, you kill them. Yeah. That's self-defense. That's self-preservation. That's absolutely fine. You know, that's how it should be. But he's going out seeking someone to kill. Mm. Granted, so he doesn't die, but that person isn't the one killing him. Technically, he killed himself. Yeah. So, you know, it's on him. Yeah. So it's, it's really hard and it's really interesting the way the, the way the story unfolds i just we could probably talk about this for another hour and a half but, you know i think we're lucky phil hasn't been here because the three of us we wouldn't have been able to say half of what we wanted to say yeah. it's true yeah. <laughs> but hopefully phil got his uh target and he'll be back with us next week <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I think we can go into final thoughts and scores now. So if in the chat, if you've read along, if you have read this book, pop your score in the chat. And as always, we'll add it to ours. Sounds like you all have. So... Yes, hopefully they have, because this deserves to be read, I yeah. think. Great. Do you want to go first or should we have Phil go first? Uh, I'll go first. I can just keep an eye on everyone's scores then, is it? Um, awesome. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, mate. Um I've, I've sung this book's praises so much throughout this whole video, uh, throughout this whole show, and um, I'm so intrigued. I have so many questions, you know, the, the typical, is he, isn't he mental? That's it. That's all I want answered. But again, I want it for the journey. I want it for the ride. Um, and I don't think I'll be that bothered about the end, about the destination, you know? Um stunning book i mean it's uh, you know the tone is set perfectly in every single panel and page and the relationships are, f are fantastic and i just loved it all the the, the narration of what highland g said earlier um what did he say it wasn't narration it was in a monologue that was brilliant um i love that uh we've said in the past too much too much narration too much monologue and nah this was brilliant there was loads in your and I loved it. Um, this book was brilliant. Um, I'm going to give it a high score. Uh, and But it, but it's not going to be... You know, sometimes we give a book a score, but we go, I think it's going to get better in the future. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be consistent all the way through. And um, and I think if I did read on, I, I'm hoping that my score will either be the same or higher. Um, but I'm pretty sure it will be the same. Um, I am going to give this book a 9 out of 10. Wow. 
Wow, awesome. Okay, um, shall we see what Phil has to say? Yes, let's go. Uh, I will... Oh, there we go. Everyone, sorry I couldn't oh. be there tonight, but history could be made tonight. Um, and watching my beloved Rangers, which I couldn't, I couldn't not, I could not enjoy it. Um, at this point, when you're watching this, I'm going to be having a beer in one hand and tears dripping down my face, whether or not they're tears of joy or tears of sadness. Come on, Rangers. Anyway, kill or be killed. And listen, I really, really enjoyed this book. It is, I think it's difficult to judge this, to judge it, because with Brubaker and Phillips, you tend to get the payoff, obviously, towards the front towards the end you read the whole story there's always something that all kind of pays off and the the thing all comes to head and that doesn't happen here in, in, in volume one but does a really good job at setting everything up a good job of setting up obviously the main character and his kind of pals around it who you're going to have a, an impact I'm sure on what, on what goes on um, the artwork is really good it's kind of what you expect of Phillips I don't think it's his best work I think he's done better stuff than some of the other books these two have worked together on but it's just because I think the high standard and I, I quite like it, it, his work and again the atmosphere dark it's grim to kind of match the kind of story towards suicide and death and so on um yeah and it has snow and I love a good <laughs> snow scene called it atmospheric <laughs> and the story goes fairly quickly and uh but there's a lot there to absorb it's not like it's you know, Black Widow where there's very little information on it. It's just, there's a lot there to read, but it keeps you intrigued and keeps you on the story and, and again that's just their craft, that's what they do, they're very good at what they do. Um what I will say when the demon first appeared, I was just thinking, Christ Demons. Like where where's this going? I wasn't really looking forward to this point. But the more it kind of went on, I'm at the point and anyway, I don't know if these guys have touched on it, that I'm at the point where is there really a demon? Or is this all psychological? I tend to think it's psychological because even like the, the him trying to justify as a real demon, you know, getting sick, breaking his arm, getting beat up by a, a couple of thugs, it all seems quite coincidental. And he's trying to convince himself that this is a real thing that he should be doing because he's going to die. But by the, do you know what I'm trying to say? I enjoy that. I love the way the kind of story's layered that way. And I do think that Preferials will hit the fan with this, and I can't wait to read on. Um. There are a few things I didn't like. I mean, the whole kind of quirkiness where he went on a bit tangent and came back and forth. I don't know what that adds to the character. I actually found that a bit more annoying than than a cool little quirk. I just didn't like it. But it's, I mean, we're nitpicking here slightly. Um, the, the the guys also had. It, it seems there's, there's some other messages in in the book um, about racism and sexism and stuff and. I find them quite confusing and where they stand on it in a way because I, I, I just didn't really get it. But I think that's, you know, if I was live tonight chatting with the, 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 the fellas and everyone on the chat, I would probably have that cleared up no problem. But at the minute, it's slightly more confusing. But overall, looking forward to the story, the rest of the story, coming to read on, enjoyed it. Don't have too many bad things to say about it, but I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. And I'm sorry, Chris. It's not ten out of ten. <laughs> I just think it's it's set things up nicely, but I think there's so much more to come. So I need. So I can be there again. See you next week. Love yous. He apologised to Chris. I picked the book. He should be apologising to me. <laughs> oh, but Chris loves this book, doesn't he? He absolutely <laughs> loves this. <laughs> Okay, so an eight from Phil. I will keep this very, very short because I'm uh, aware of the time up there. I loved it. Um, the three extra pages at the start aside, the missing boob aside, you know, I can forgive those <laughs> things. I absolutely love One this. out of ten. <laughs> Nine boobs up. Um, <laughs> absolutely loved it. Um, I'm definitely going to read on. Art's great, story's great, character's great. We've said everything positive there is about it. The few nitpicky parts... Um, I just want to pick up on what Phil said about the, the confusion, I think, with the racism. I think um, in the subway scene, when he imagines the two people picking on the old lady, he calls himself a racist because one of the attackers is black. 
Yeah. But then later on, he goes to the park and he's like, oh, I could kill a drug dealer. He's like, but I can't do that because it's racist. And then it's like, OK, but now you've just said all drug dealers are black. That's racist. You know, so yeah. it's like he's trying not to be racist by being extra racist. So I think that was a bit confusing throughout <laughs> the book. But yeah, I love this and I'm definitely going to read on. And is it just 20 and that's it? There's no more? Or I is think, it continuing? Uh, no, I think that's that's it. Oh, boo. But um, hopefully it concludes. But I yeah. will definitely get this read. I, I love this. Um, I'm going to give this a 9.5. Oh. Loved it. Oh, I've got to. I've got to. I loved it. That is great. Nice. Um, we do have several scores in. Yep. Um, just go through really quickly. Kev gives it a nine. He says it was brilliant. Yeah. Connie comes in, says, sorry, she's late. It's a nine from me. Drops in just in time for the score. Thank yeah. you, Connie. Awesome. <laughs> Wednesday spoiler scores it a 10. Wow. Full marks. Very few books on the Nerd Herd get full marks. So thank you for that. Uh, Jack Talks Comics gives it an eight. What, what do you think Chris gives it from off my shelves? Mm. Mm. We'll put him down for a one. <laughs> it's a 10 from Chris from off my shelves. Highland G gives it a nine. He loved it as well. Uh, Liam, Funky Gibbons, loved it from start to finish. Art was fantastic. Writing was fantastic. Definitely want to read more. Nine out of 10. Wow. Wow. Some high scores there. Very high scores. I'm well chuffed because this was my pick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got the scores in. Yes. Do you have a total uh, for us? Yes, we do. Right. So with all of your guys' scores, uh, we have uh, got a 9.2. Okay. Uh, so, Shane, with the overall score, can you just remind me of the rules? If it's uh, like 1.12, does it go... Then it's below. If it's three, it goes up. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, combining that with uh, Phil's eight, Shane's nine point five, and my nine, uh, this gets an average score of eight point nine. Wait, nine? Ooh. Eight point nine? We don't do. Do we? Yes, eight point nine. Yes, eight point nine. There we go. <laughs> God, sorry guys. Okay, let's have a look. Hmm, will it make the top ten? Hmm. Drum roll. Drum roll. Second place. <gasps> what top row? Yeah, you, <laughs> you've, you've got it. You've got Batman uh, Adventures: Mad Love in the top row as well, and Kingdom Come. Yeah, you're doing well, mate. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. You were in the top row. There we go. Oh, so that means you have to change it all. <laughs> oh, I've got to change a lot. I do, uh, but that's okay. It's it's a book worthy of my time to change this. Uh, but let's have a look at the rest of the leaderboard as well, just so you guys can see. Oh, it's filling up nice. Yes. So, sorry, can you go back to the other one? What are we losing off the top 10 screen? Sex Criminals, Volume oh, 1. Oh, Sex Criminals. Oh, that's unfortunate. That was a really good one as well. Yeah. And there we go. Fantastic. Well, I, I'm chuffed. I did. I, I mean, obviously, I hoped the book would be good. I didn't think it would be that good, though. So I'm well chuffed. Um, shall we uh, tell just, everyone what just... we're reading? Yes, just to clear it up though, Martin's asked, did I get his score? Yes, I did get your score. Yes. Don't worry about that. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, yes. Got everyone's score. Let's tell people what we got um, up next week. Yes, what are we reading next week? We're reading... Scott, what are we reading next week? We are going to be reading Critical Role Vo Vox Machina Origins Volume 1. For anyone who's a D&D &D nerd or a role-playing nerd in general, like myself, Shane likes it too, Phil likes it, loads of people are getting involved with D&D &D and especially because of Critical Role and their streaming sessions, they've made a comic based on their first ever campaign it's awesome, and uh, I cannot wait to read this and get your opinions with everyone else. The art looks awesome. The faces on that are 
gorgeous. Yes. And Chris has said, Dark Horse pick. Looking forward to it. Yes. And uh, Triple G, yes, it is a cartoon. It's on Amazon as well. Is it really? Ah. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. But I don't think the show is the same as the book. Oh, so I can watch it and it won't spoil the book for me. I think so. But read the book first, just in case. I've never I've oh, not yeah. read the book yet. <laughs> okay, I'll read the book and then I'll watch the show. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, cannot wait. So please join us next week for that. Yes, definitely looking forward to that. And Phil will be back next week, unless mm. he has to kill another person for another month of life. <laughs> uh, it's a life, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for joining. Really appreciate it. Um, we will see you next week. There's nothing left to do but to wave. No. I've got quiz brain on, sorry. There's nothing left to do, but get your waves out. Whee. See you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs>